Okay, so hello everybody. Um, my name is Mark. I am a master's student or I was a master's student at the Salzburg University of Applied Sciences and I'm presenting my master thesis or at least a small part of the master thesis for you. Um, the short paper is called Detecting Stops and Measures in Music Scores with Deep Learning. So let's get into that. Let's see if it works or else I'm just There we go. So the research question is um, whether or not it's possible to accurately detect um, three kinds or three categories of measures in music sheet notation. And that is for both handwritten and uh, typeset music. And on the um, presentation, you can see the three categories. There are system measures, staffs, and just regular measures that span across um, one, one page. Um, there are like multiple relevances for this. There is, um, first of all, the detection of measures itself is a key pre-processing step, which we already saw in previous presentations. It is rather important that we know where these measures are and that we can accurately predict which ones they are, maybe if we want to use them. Um, you can also might be able to find inconsistency, inconsistencies between two editions of um, two separate sheets. Um, you could use this technique to find measures in books or extract them out of documents. And it um, might pose, um, there is the possibility like, to cl create collaborative work for this, to create a, some sort of skeleton where you say you have X number of measures and you just create the empty measures and you say, I'm going to transpose from 1 to 100, you're going to transpose from 100 to 200, and we split up the work, and the measures are already there, and you don't have to count how many measures there are. Um, for the methods, I use the Detectron 2 framework, which is a rather good optical um, recognition software or API from Facebook, which provides RCNNs, which are uh, regional um, um, convolutional neural networks. Um, I used two open data sets, the open source data sets, that is the Maschima++ and the bounding box annotations of musical measures, which is quite a mouthful. So I shortly dubbed it Audio Labs data set. And that's, that's the name now. So we got just going to call it Audio Labs for now. Um, the music Maschima++ has handwritten is handwritten, has 140 pages with nine augmentations, uh, which are the same pages, but slightly augmented, which that, that takes it up to 1,400 pages. And the Audio Labs has, is, is in typeset, has 490 pages. But the, the unfortunate thing is it only has system measures. So um, we had to enhance the already existing data sets with the other two categories of measures. Um, we did that by training the Muschimo++ data set or on the Muschimo++ data set. And we took that model and put it onto the, um, the audio labs data set. So you can see the ground truth system measures that we have already, that they already existed um, on the top right in um, purple or violet and on the bottom right, the bottom left, you can see the predicted stop measures from the, uh, from the neural network. And we overlap those to get calculated or approximated stops. Uh, we hand, uh, I, or I manually corrected all those stop measures for all the pages. And then I took them and I, again, I used the ground tooth system measures now. And I took all the bars and I combined them together to get to get calculated staff measures. And that's how I enhanced the data set. And now the data set has all three categories, which is pretty cool. So we have a typeset and a handwritten data set. And now we can take those and we split those up in training, testing, and validation data set. I ran a convolutional neural network, RCNN, uh, with 20, up to 20,000 iterations with a learning rate of 0.005 and a batch test of three. And um, there's one important note here that I only took the 
I, I took the best uh, neural network during that training process. So it's basically already stopping so that we avoid overfitting. Um, these are the numbers for the training, which is, um, um, you can quickly go through that or look at it and look at it again in the recording maybe. Um, those are the, again, numbers for training um, divided by testing validation in total. So there's quite a lot. We have roughly 170,000 bounding boxes, which so it's, it's pretty good. Um, and we have the results here. Um, we tra I train on three different categories. So on each category, I also trained on, on three different backbones, which is ResNet 50, ResNet 101, and ResNext 101, which are all provided from the Detector 2 framework. And you can see the average positions here, which are all close to 90 or above 90% accuracy, which is, I think it's remarkable. It's pretty good. And I also trained on two classes. So I might skip back just a moment. These are single class models. So I only trained for system measures, only for staff measures and only for staffs here. So it only can, it can only detect one category. And here I, to just, test things out. I also trained on two categories, which are system measures and staffs, and also on all three categories, like you would normally do, you just take all three categories and train on those. But unfortunately, the results weren't quite as good as single models. It's a bit expected because single models is just a tiny bit easier, but they're like a lot better. And I have some uh, results as pictures, as you can see here. Um, Maybe just um, on the left side, we have measures. On the center, we have system measures. On the right, we have staffs, I think. Um, these are for typeset music. So you can, on the first hand, uh, glance, see they're quite good for typeset music. Then we have handwritten music, which uh, you can see they work. They're not as good, but they work. But unfortunately, they're also like these kinds of handwritten music, which it doesn't work like at all, staffs are okay, but system measures are kind of wonky. So the conclusion here is that uh, the training might seem really, really good and the uh, accuracy is, is top notch, but it, it doesn't like categorize uh, across all or all the, the um, handwritten music. Typeset music works rather well, everything, or, or the most things I tested worked pretty good. It has a high accuracy there but handwritten music is really diverse and it's hard to categorize those for the network. And one of the reasons is, I think that there's enough um, data for it. The most Puma++ plus plus is still like very similar to typeset and not quite um, as extreme as the IMSLP, for example. And that is the presentation, thanks. Thank you. So maybe we could open the discussion if anyone wants to ask any question. Hi, I can ask a question if nobody else has one. Um, yeah, you can start. Yeah, did you do any sort of augmentation to warp warp the staves so that maybe it would be more performant with wavy scans and stuff it would have, it would have been advantageous yes it, it is certainly something that should be done in the future but i didn't do it in this work okay thank you uh craig posted a question um he said what about orchestral music orchestral music um i don't think there is there is no orchestral music in the data sets. So um, those have not been trained on. And um, I'm, I'm just gonna lean out the window and say they don't work quite as good because it, it's nothing that the, the neural network has ever seen. So, but it, it, um, it, it would be good if we had like another data set with all three types of measures where we could train. But unfortunately we currently only have those two. So it's, it's quite a limited resource right now. Thank you. Anyone? We can go for one more question if no one has one. 
then I have one. I don't see any hands. So maybe this is beyond your goals and objectives of your research, and maybe Alexander can wait in as well. But um, how does uh, solving this problem fit in the whole OMR pipeline? Um, how is it going to help, or yeah, how, how do you see it fitting? Um, so detecting the the measures themselves or the staff lines, it's it's quite important. I at least in my opinion to just find um, where, where, the, uh, where some systems should start. For example, we, we saw in the presentations early on today um, that some of them used measures to categorize things. And for it's, it's, it's important there, for example. So if you have a neural network that can already find these, me uh, these measures with good and high accuracy, you don't have to do enough uh, method for that. You can just use that one. So it might be advantageous there. Sorry. Uh, do you think we could use your architecture to annotate? I mean, the data sets that are already exist don't have this structural information. Do you think we could use it to uh, go back and annotate and uh, give more data to, to the already existing data set? Yes. Uh, so, so you certainly can try. It's, as I said, it's not working on like all the types of music so it's it's it has its limitations for types of music uh for for sorry for handwritten music but it certainly works for typesets so um everything is online i can type the link afterwards it's on my github repository so you can use it to um, augment or to to add data to your data sets that is certainly possible one thing to note is you would need to you probably would need to manually correct um, the, the, the bounding boxes, of course. Thank you very much.